This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Bethlehem and Frankville churches. Your service is coming a little late because I did take yesterday off um, for some family time. So I welcome you just shortly after Christmas. Um, one thing that I certainly want to apologize for, and Abby too, is that Lauren and Janine's um, recording that they had did not get in the Christmas Eve service. So we will make sure that gets in today. And again, we profusely apologize. We, we would, would like, like to take a moment to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. During this season, we will be celebrating hope, peace, love, and joy. We pray that all four of these would fill your life in every way this Christmas and beyond. We are grateful to God. This Christmas, as in all previous years, we celebrate Emmanuel. Without Christ's presence among us, we would be lost. Through God's presence working within us, we are being healed, transformed, reconciled, and made whole. We, we pray, pray you, you have, have a fantastic, fantastic Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We want to continue to keep the family of Dolores Hughes in our thoughts and prayers. The family of Dale Keesaw in our thoughts and prayers. And as I thought of it, we need to keep the families of Vera Zabel and Betty Fry and Jim Clucky also in our thoughts and prayers as this is a year that will be different for all of those families and such wonderful saints that we have lost in this last year. So certainly keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come from the Christmas day and Christmas Eve celebrations. Remind us, Lord, not to shut our hearts and our eyes and our minds from that day forward, remind us that the Christmas season continues throughout our lives, that we must continue to prepare ourselves for when Christ comes again to meet us. Lord, let each person feel your presence this day. Let them know that they are not alone and that Christ will someday return again. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. If we look at our own lives, we must confess the mixture of giving and selfishness. Our waiting on the Lord turned to an endless rush are missing the mark of Advent. Lord, forgive our frantic ways and misplaced efforts. But we can also trust in God, who still brings us salvation, who still supplies us strength, who hears our songs of gratitude, who accepts our joyful praise. Let us draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us shout it in the church and in the town. The Lord's great name will still be praised. His saving deeds support our lives. His greatness still astounds us. The Holy One of Israel is among us. Praise the Lord and sing for joy. As we hear the ancient prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, we long for the day when death will be swallowed up and every tear will be wiped away. 
As we wait expectantly for Christ's promised return, we live in assurance of God's gracious forgiveness. Amen. Know today that you are forgiven. Amen. The scripture I have chosen comes from Luke, the second chapter, verses 25 through 40. Mary and Joseph bring the baby to the temple. Hear the word, word of the Lord. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jer Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. There was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. He was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to him, what the common law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own souls too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penel and the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then, he would, and then she was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and grace of God was on him. Here ends the word of the Lord. In the scripture this morning, we see two different people, not people that we see in the Christmas story or have made a special place for, just simple people like you and I. Simeon and Anna. Simeon was an old man, but he was waiting in anticipation, in expectation that he would see the Messiah before he died. And Anna, who had been widowed, but found her place in the temple, praying night and day, fasting, and praying. She was anticipating that even though her life was not easy, 
She was anticipating the Messiah. She was anticipating this child, this Christ child, who would save the world. As we have just had our Christmas Eve celebration, as we have gathered, maybe with our families, maybe we have stayed safe and stayed home and did Zoom, but the excitement and the anticipation of those days are something we always work ourselves up to. During the Advent season, we, we talk about the hope and the joy and the love and how we need to prepare our hearts. And it seems like sometimes as soon as that's over, we change. We change back to where we were. What Christ wants us to do is to grow. To grow each and every day in our relationship with him. I remember last year after Christmas, I had just said to somebody, how was your Christmas? And they said, Christmas is just for kids. And my heart broke. Because Christmas is for me. Christmas is for you. Christmas has more meaning than what the kids get in their stocking. Christmas has more meaning than if we get to see our family or not. Christmas is Christ coming for you and I. Christmas is not just for kids. And I think we get that mindset. And I might get myself in trouble here, but as I thought about that saying, Christmas is just for kids, in the last few months, what I hear is COVID is just for those who are older. That COVID's not going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt you. It's just for those people who are 70 or older. And again, my heart breaks because I think those people who are 70 and older have so much meaning in our lives. Simeon, Anna, they were elderly, but they were looking for the Messiah. People that are older, as I sat with Dolores Hughes, She was waiting for God. It makes your heart feel good that she is waiting and knowing that Christ would take her hand. So yes, Christmas is for more than you and I. COVID may affect those who are older but in the long run, it affects all of us. Simeon and Anna had so much to give us. Those who are older have so much to give us. Those who are younger have so much to give us. So as we go forward in this season, the season that is not over yet, our life is a season that we should continue to prepare ourselves. We need to continue to remember that Christ will come again. We need to remember that we need to continue to prepare our hearts.
to not look at our selfish ways. To wait in anticipation. It makes me smile when I say Christ will come again. If it doesn't make you smile, knowing that that promise is there, then we need to dig deeper. We need to work on our relationship with Christ. Christ will come again. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and most loving God, as we go through this time, remind us that Christmas is not just for kids, that Christmas is not just for the parties or the gatherings or the presents. Lord, you love to see us together. You love to see us rejoicing. You love to see us praising you. Christmas is for each one who believes and trusts in you. Remind us that disease especially this COVID, is not just about the elderly. And even if it was just about the elderly, I would certainly hope that we have a heart that would not want to see any of our loved ones go through this. Remind us that the Christmas season goes on and on and on. That we can find that hope, that peace, that joy, that love throughout the year. Remind us to search ourselves. When we don't get excited, when we don't rejoice because we know Christ will come again. Lord, we especially want to lift up the families and our congregations who have lost a loved one this year. The family of Betty Fry, the family of Vera Zabel, the family of Dolores Hughes the family of Jim Clucky, the family of Dale Kisa. Lord, bring that peace upon them. Let them hold on to the memories and what has been taught to them by people who were older, who had so much to give and to teach us who all trusted in Jesus Christ and took his hand on that day. And today are celebrating Christmas like never before. Again, Lord, I lift up the congregations of Frankville and Bethlehem who so steadily stand by you, even when times are tough. And today we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We would, we would like to take a moment to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. During this season, we will be celebrating hope, peace, love, and joy. We pray that all four of these would fill your life in every way this Christmas and beyond. We are grateful to God. This Christmas, as in all previous years, we celebrate Emmanuel. Without Christ's presence among us, we would be lost. Through God's presence working within us, we are being healed, transformed, reconciled, and made whole. We, we pray, pray you, you have, have a, a fantastic, fantastic Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. The song I chose for today is called Alleluia Christmas. Hallelujah Christmas. Um, I sang it a few years ago with my girls, and I think it talks about hope and anticipation of knowing that Christ will come again. I've heard about this baby boy who comes to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song for you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift with every breath I'm singing Alleluia Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A couple came to Bethlehem expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon there was no room for them to stay so in a manger filled with hay God's only son was born oh hallelujah 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 The shepherds left their flocks by night To see this baby wrapped in light A host of angels led them all to you It was just like the angel said You'll find him in a manger bed Emmanuel and Savior Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah, Hallelujah. A star shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you. And to the place in which you were, their frankincense and golden myrrh, they gave to you and cried out, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I know you came to rescue me 
this baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Till every breath you drew was hallelujah. 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 Continue to live in anticipation. Continue to live in expectation that Christ will come again. When you say that, I hope you feel a peace in your heart. Knowing that Christ came here, he walked the earth, he died and rose again so that he may return again for you and I. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.